Hello everybody and welcome back to the Young Fan Podcast, a very unplanned, a very strange episode that I didn't think we were going to record. I thought the next episode of the podcast was going to be the preview for the AFC Wimbledon versus Oxford United clash in the Carabao Cup. I was wrong apparently because some Oxford United news has broken uh, last night, or should I say yesterday afternoon. Uh, more information came about it last night as it kind of went through into the evening. But at last night, um, we were hearing more news about the Rob Dickey departure. But yesterday afternoon, uh, it got officially announced at, I want to say, about 2 o'clock, just before the Brentford game. Oxford United decided to officially announce the QPR um, signing of Rob Dickey. Um, I haven't done any plan on this episode of the podcast. I had, Normally, I like to... Um, put like notes um, and, and write notes before the episodes of the podcast before I do an episode um, today though that isn't going to be the case um, I'm just going to literally speak about how I feel about the departure and we're also going to do like a mini roundup of pre-season obviously now pre-season has finished at Oxford United um, so first of all I'll do sort of my initial um, thoughts on the Rob Dickey departure first of all I'm not surprised it's happened I think we need to stress that I would I like to stress that as well it's not this isn't an episode of the podcast where I'm gonna sort of sit here and go I can't believe this has happened Rob Dickey you've completely let us down you've traded us I think for a long 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 time um, Rob Dickey I think Rob Dickey um, knew himself and I think we knew as fans that Rob Dickey was going to leave Oxford United I spoke about it in the last episode of the podcast. I spoke about it in the Transfer Talks Begin episode of the podcast as well. Is Dickie going to leave? And sort of, I'm not going to lie, as it all went on a little bit more, I did sort of have that feeling inside me that maybe he wouldn't leave. Um, But apparently he has left now. Um, It was inevitable, but at the same time, you sort of tried to tell yourself that maybe he was going to stay. But no, he has left. Oxford United, player of the season last season for Oxford United, has left. Oxford United to join QPR, which is kind of ironic considering we've just beaten them, obviously, in the pre-season as well, which links nicely on to the pre-season roundup. But I'm not done there of Rob Dickey as well because no one knows how much we spent, sorry, how much we um, sold Rob Dickey for, and that's a really, really frustrating, sort of frustrating aspect to it as well. Obviously, we have no idea how much Rob Dickey has, has, has actually gone for. Oxford United tend to do this thing where... We sort of don't actually tell the fans how much we how much we sell these players for. Um, Gavin White, we did it. Shannon Baptiste, we did it. Tarek Foster, we do it. We do this all the time. We have no idea as fans um, how much we're how much we're spending on these players. Um, uh, sorry, how much we're 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 um, letting these players go for, and how how much other teams are spending on our players. We have no idea as fans. They're always just under closed fees. Um, you know, and we just you know, Ivan Tony's just gone to Brentford. For, uh, from Peterborough for five million pounds. It's it's well known. It was five million, you know. Uh, on the other the other scale as well, Donny Van der Beek's just gone to Manchester United for thirty five million pounds, forty million euros. You know, none of the you don't see these these transfers go for under closed fees as often as Oxford United do. It's just consistent under closed fees. I understand the media are more behind the Manchester United business, and we're Oxford United, of course, I understand that, but still, as fans, I just feel like we deserve to know a little bit more about that side of the business. This isn't a dig at Oxford United at all. Um, I love Oxford United, of course I do, but I just think we should know a little bit more about Oxford United uh, and how much we're getting for them. It wouldn't harm, you know, if they just could tell us how much we're, how much we're getting for these players it would be nice if we could just find out exactly how much we were getting for them. I understand Oxford United tend, um, or maybe don't want to, um, to take, want to tell us maybe because it's maybe because it is it's something in the contract and, and the negotiations that is never going to be told what it is, or maybe it's because they're too low and they do not want to on, on, basically tell the fans um, how much um, how much they've let Rob Dickey go for. Which is frustrating, of course it is. Um, and as fans, I just do feel like we deserve to know a little bit more about the outgoings in terms of transfers and the incomings of transfers as well. Of course, we've sort of signed Sean Clare this transfer window, Joel Cooper. None of that have been, has been exposed to how much we spent on it as well. The financial side of this football club, we just simply do not know exactly how much we're spending on these players. And it is complete facts as well that we have no idea 
on a transfer um, on a transfer window basis how much oxygen I just spend per transfer window because the players that we are buying and the players that will leave the football club we have zero idea of how much it comes of course rumors will tell us and things like that as well but how much do rumors know how much do you know the rumors don't know it's a rumor for a reason one and a half million pounds people are saying um, but then some people are saying three to four million pounds you know it would just be fantastic if Oxford could come out and say, look, it was one and a half million pounds or it was two million pounds. There were some add-ons as well. And then we could all say, well, it's a good piece of business. He's only got nine months left on his nine months left on his contract. That's absolutely fine. But the problem we've got is we have no idea. They could have sold him for one and a half million pounds or one million with 500k add-ons. We have zero idea. When people are saying three to four million pounds is the rate of the player as well. You know, Ivan Tony's just gone from a League One side to um, to a Championship side for five million pounds. Rob Dickey's just gone from a League One side to a Championship player, um, Championship um, side as well. I doubt we've got five million for him. I'm not sure how much, how, how many years Ivan Tony had left on his contract, but I'm also pretty certain as well. Um, you know that we we should have got somewhere near five million. Um, I'm not delusional. I'm not going to sit here and say we needed we needed we wanted you know ten million pounds for Rob Dickey. I know that as well. But I, I am saying is. I hope it's not one and a half million pounds, what people are sometimes saying. I hope it's not two million pounds. Just be three to four million pounds. Um, there are some add-ons as well, we know that. So, I don't know. It, it's one of those, isn't it, really? We want to know exactly how much we've got for Rob Dickey, but I just don't think we're going to know. We never will know. Of course, there were some rumours of how much we spent on Sean Clare, which was £150,000 with add-ons as well. But, look, I hope we've got money for Rob Dickey. I hope we could maybe reinvest this money elsewhere. All this Rob Dickey money could have already been put into sort of the signings of Sean Clare, Joel Cooper, etc., etc. Maybe those were was to come out of the Rob Dickey bank, um, and now he's gone. We've sort of cleared the debts, if you like, and we, we've now got no nothing to worry about in terms of um, in in terms of the finances. But Rob Dickey's gone. He's left Oxford United. He's joined QPR um, on a four-year deal for an underclosed fee as well. So interesting to see. Um, how Rob Dickey does that though, and I must also stress as well, we wish Rob Dickey the best of luck um, at QPR. Um, you know, we don't, we're not going to sit here and say, oh, you know, he's traded us or whatever, he, he's left us and, and all that thing as well. He's, he's left for a better opportunity at a championship club. We would never sort of stand in his way of, of moving at a higher level as well. Hopefully we can join him in the championship next season with QPR, um, but you just never know. Hopefully we can. Um, I really do hope we can. Um, but, you know, he's left, he's gone to QPR, and uh, we wish him all the best uh, at QPR as well. But it all now turns to Oxford United. We're without Rob Dickey. We don't have to speak about that in every single Oxford United podcast we do from now on. He's gone. He's no longer an Oxford United player. That is finished. Um, we started the month with a departure, the 1st of September, but hopefully the rest of the month can... Uh, we can start the season and we can start the season well because that's what the rest of September offers for us as well. And while we talk about months, I've just finished my f the first month um, of doing the podcast and I would just like to thank you all for so much for the support on this first month. We've hit 20, I think it's 23 subscribers um, in one month, which is just beyond what I thought we were going to do. Um, the support on the last episode of the podcast, the predictions, thank you so much for that as well. Just liking that episode and just seeing those likes on that episode was, was just great. And it just showed your support um, uh, as well. So thank you very much for that. And if you could do the same on this as well, if you like what you're seeing, it's your first time here, leave a subscription um, to, the, to the Young Fan Podcast YouTube channel. That would be fantastic. If you could leave a like on this episode as well, um, that would be absolutely fantastic. Um, and, and, and we're going to continue bringing out um, regular content um, as the season now um, nearly begins. I didn't think we were going to be doing an episode between sort of the the Carabao Cup um, first game and the last predictions episode, but you've got one in between um, because Rob Dickey has of course joined QPR and because I just thought it'd be a great opportunity just to sort of discuss and do a real overview of um, pre-season for Oxford United as well. Which is where we're going to go to now, because obviously the first three games of pre-season um, were Woking, Oxford City and Banbury. Am I wrong or am I right? I want to say that as well. I'm, I'm, this is proof that there is nothing. Um, I've just literally got nothing in front of me. I want to say Woking, I want to say Oxford City and I want to say Banbury. I know it's Banbury and Oxford, Oxford City and I hope it's Woking. Um, I'm not entirely sure, but I think it is. Um, so, I mean, either the way, it was three non-league sides and we beat them all, um, which which was very, very good. 
We also then played the first game of pre-season where we could actually watch it as fans, and that was Crystal Palace, which I did watch. Um, we went 1-0 up in that game as well. I generally thought we did very, very well. Um, it, it, so we did actually play some really aspects of good football against a very, very strong QPR side. I would probably would say um, full-strength QPR side, Zaha. Um, obviously the key man for Crystal Palace, and he played a lot of uh, a lot of football in that game. Pretty sure he played 90 minutes, if I'm not mistaken. He might have come off in the um, the last few minutes, but I'm pretty sure he did play. Well, I know he did play um, a, a huge chunk of, of that game, um, the majority of it anyway. So, you know, it was a full-strength QPR side, and we gave him a very, very good um, a very, very good game. So I'm, I'm happy with... Um, I'm, 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 I was happy with that performance. We made some changes at half time. We did nearly a full change um, in in terms of in terms of um, the starting lineup in, in particular, and then from then on, um, we did concede two goals. Obviously, they tried to keep Crystal Palace tried to keep their team in the same sort of um, in, in the same way. Um, obviously, our, they had the sort of momentum going forward. They could um, sort of they had the rhythm. They have the pattern of the game. We changed at half time, giving the players a run out. Um, other players, um, the game time as well, and that's obviously when it all went a little bit wrong as well. The rhythm of the game sort of dropped, um, and then obviously they got those two goals. But when we sort of got the when we got our foot on the game and, and um, or our feet on the game as it went on as well, we didn't concede. So um, that's pretty decent, um, showing um, that we that we that we can hold on against these Premier League sides um, as well. And we went one and up against them as well. We scored against them and. Um, we only conceded two goals when obviously we made some changes as well, and we saved the penalty. So really, really positive. Um, and there were obviously serious, sort of places where we need to improve. Of course, there was. It's pre-season. However, generally thought that Crystal Palace game um, was pretty good for Oxford United, and I thought it was a really, really good performance from 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 all of the players um, as well. So happy with that first game. Really happy with that first game, um, which is obviously when we moved on to. Um, the next game, which was QPR, um, we beat them 1-0 um, as well. It was a quick turnaround from, from Crystal Palace to QPR, just a few days. Uh, but we came against QPR, we did very, very well. Um, it wasn't Q yeah, it was QPR the next game, wasn't it? Um, and I thought we did very, very well. Um, we, we saw the game... Um, we we played the game out very very well. I thought. I think as as the game sort of went on, we sort of grew and grew into the game. There were aspects I think where QPR um, could have done better. I think QPR were um, did weren't at their best. I think it's fair to say. Um, I thought defensively they did look a little bit shaky. Hopefully Rob Dickey can uh, maybe sort them out for for QPR. I did think defensively they were a bit shaky. They missed some big opportunities. Um, so obviously there were some areas where um, where Oxford United. Um, where, where QPR probably could have pounced on us. They didn't, though. Um, so I, I don't think we can sit here and say... Um, I don't think we can sit and say we didn't deserve to win. I think we very much did. I thought we dominated the game in large majorities of it. And I thought um, we did definitely deserve... Um, we definitely did deserve um, the way um, that scoreline went at 1-0. Uh, it was a good finish um, from... Um, from from Matty Taylor, I think he should have scored more. He had some good opportunities to score more. I think as a team, we should have scored more as well. Um, obviously, uh, Anthony Ford had some good opportunities um, to, to to maybe make it two 0 Matty Taylor as well got a few few opportunities, and then obviously did finally score um, to make it one nil. Um, we obviously made some big changes in those sort of games as well, bringing off players, bringing in players as well. So. A difficult one pre-season out in um, for Oxford United, but we did it. We did it. We uh, we um, played um, pretty well. We beat a championship side, which is always nice to see um, as well. So, you know, good performance against QPR. Um, saw some good players. All the players I think we've brought in, uh, brought in look very, very decent. Uh, I don't think any of the players that we've brought in look maybe... Um, uncomfortable playing for Oxford United. I don't think any of them feel like they're playing at a too high a level. I thought every one of the players that played um, of the new boys and the squad we've got now look like they're playing at the right level and are, are playing at the Oxford United level that we want to be at. So, happy with that. Um, really, really happy with that. And uh, we can sort of move away from that from that QPR game. Pretty, pretty happy, to be honest. We should have scored more. We could have conceded a few. Um, so, you know, not a bad performance for Oxford United, not the best performance, but not a bad performance. And we get the win against the championship side as well, which is which is always very, very nice to see. Um, a very, very nice to, sort of feeling to get 
um, uh, in a preseason game. It's just a preseason. It's just a friendly match. But you know, you beat a championship side that were pretty full strength as well, which is always uh, always very very nice. Um, which is why we move now on to the Brentford game, um, the most recent game, um, literally yesterday, just before the QP, just before the QPR, um, and Rob Dickey news came in. Um, this game. Um, obviously, was was available on um, um, live for everyone to watch um, on Brentford's YouTube. I thought that was a bit of an issue with the stream at times, um, or for a long, for a large period of, of, of the middle of the game. Um, I'd say in the large period, it was only about twenty minutes of it. But um, you know, we didn't see those twenty minutes, but we didn't concede, um, so that's always nice. And we actually did come from two 0 down to draw the game two two, which I thought was really really good. Um, it showed um, it showed belief to come back at two two. Come back from 2 0 to come back to 2 2. At the two goals, obviously, came from Derek Ossi um, as well, coming off the bench, getting two goals, which is very, very nice as well. Two decent finishes from him. So I'm sure that will give him some confidence as well. Um, so I, I'm happy with it. I'm really, really happy with that as well. I thought, generally, I thought we did look under under the cost for large periods of that Brentford game. But I think, generally, we, we sort of should stay with it. We showed belief um, and we came back fighting and we came back to 2 2 with about 10 minutes to go. So I think, generally, um, you know, it's not easy in a preseason friendly to find that motivation to to sort of you know come back from two 0 to come back to two two. But I think we did. I think we did um, as well, which is very very good. Um, so I mean, really really happy with with Oxford United's performance in that one. Really happy with Oxford United's performance against QPR. Generally quite happy with their performance against Crystal Palace. Um, so I think generally, I think it was a really really good preseason for Oxford United. Um, not a perform. No performances. I don't think looked look were unbelievable. Um, no performances were like you know that's going to be absolutely unbelievable. I thought generally each preseason game that we played so far has been pretty pretty decent. Um, we've obviously now got two games which we're sort of classing as preseason against Wimbledon, and then obviously uh, against Chelsea in the twenty ones or in twenty threes, isn't it? In the um in in the League Cup or the AFL Cup, whatever it's called, or the is it the Leasing Cup actually? Um, sorry, the Carabao Cups the. Is that one? Sorry, the, this is obviously the you know, the leasing cup. I'm not mistaken um, against under tw- or the Chelsea um, under twenty threes or under twenty ones. Um, so that should be a decent run out. Um, he has obviously already said they're going to be literally playing two different teams against those team against those um, against those um, squads as well. So you know it does sort of suggest that there is going to be sort of a pre season aspect to them. I think it's fair enough to be honest. I do think it's just that is that is pretty much fair enough. Um, I don't think any of us expect him to sort of go out full strength against either one of the, either of those sides. Uh, nice to beat both of them, of course. It's nice to get a nice little cut run going on as well. Nice to get to Wembley in the Leasing Cup again if we could as well. Nice to get a good um, good run of the Carabao Cup like we did last season as well. That would obviously be good. Um, if it's obviously not to be, then it's not to be. But um, it would be nice too. Um, obviously, getting to Man- getting against Man- going against Manchester City in the Carabao Cup last season. Um, you know, be a nice little game against Wimbledon to start things off if we can get the points there as well. I won't be going into too much, of, sorry, the points, to get a win uh, to go through to the next round as well. That would be great, and I will be doing a preview of that game um, as well, so we can go more into detail about that. But, you know, generally I think it was a good pre-season for Oxford United. I think the business going, I think we are going to expect a little, a, a small change, a small um, amount of business which um, in the next few days. I think now, obviously, Carl Robinson did sort of suggest that he is looking to bring in another striker. I don't know why he's bringing another striker. To be honest, he's now got he's got quite a few. Um, I did hear that he, he did say that. If I didn't hear that wrong, I know he did mention maybe cover at left back um, instead of obviously sort of um, back up from from um, from Josh Ruffles. Um, he's tends to be pretty fit in terms of in terms of the games that he gets. He tends to play quite a few games for Oxford United throughout the season. Um, so I mean that's absolutely fine. Um, if you continue doing that and if you can stay fit, but we are going to need backup. You never know what a season can, um, can can hold for Oxford in terms of injuries. So I mean, you know, I think we could expect a little bit more business. I wouldn't expect tons of business. I expect a few more loan signings potentially, bringing in a loan left back potentially. Um, if he, if I heard the striker thing right, potentially bringing in a loan striker, sort of give more competition to Matty Taylor, um, maybe as well. I'm not sure. We could say a bit more. Could see a bit more business. I'm not entirely sure, but. I think Oxford United's preseason has been pretty, pretty good. I think we've 
we've really shown teams um, in higher divisions that you know we're we're not we're not going to mess about. You know, Crystal Palace didn't expect us to to give them as much of a game as we did against the full strength side. QPR as well probably didn't want us to be beaten by a League One side. There is a bit of pride in that. You know, we're in the Championship. Let's show we're in the Championship, and we we've beaten you one nil. You know, there's no home advantage. There's no home fans. You know, they've got to travel to Oxford. That's the only, only the only disadvantage they've got. But you know, there's no fans. It's Oxford United at the Oxford United ground with no fans. So we've beaten you on your Championship side. Brentford as well, tuning up. You know, top end Championship side. L- unlucky not to be in the Premier League this season. In the, obviously falling short in the playoffs like we did to get into the Championship. You know, probably you know, a side that are going to be favourites to go up this season and we've given them a fantastic game. You know, 2-0 down, they think it's all game and all, all, all done and, you know, they can say, oh, we brought off our, some of our best players, which I'm sure they probably did. But at the end of the day, you know, the players you've come in are probably going to be, probably are playing at a higher level than all the Oxford players that were playing as well. You're in the Championship, you know, and you've, you know, you've bottled a 2-0 lead. So, you know, Interesting, very, very interesting for Oxford. Whether or not it was a, it was a Brentford sort of we think we've won it complacency thing, and Oxford pounced on that, or it was an Oxford United show and believe against Brentford. You know we're two 0 down. There's a bit of pride here. We want to show you why we want to be in the Championship this season. We want to show what we, that we mean business. There you go, two two. Off you come, off you come. Um, whoever was playing up there, who started up there, you know, off you come. Sykes, see Derek, give us a run out, and it's two two. You know, so really, really happy with it, to be honest. Really, really happy with with those performances in pre-season. Generally really happy with pre-season. We could see a bit more business. If we don't, I think we're happy with the squad. I do believe that we need a bit more depth in the full-back area. But other than that, I think we're really, really happy going into the squad. We've got a good set of midfielders. We've got a good bunch of centre-backs. I think if John Messina can come in and do a job, I think Rob Atkinson's done fantastically well in pre-season as well. Rob Dickey's now gone, but I think Rob Atkinson's done great to come in as well. So... I don't think it's too much of a worry. I don't think there's, there needs to be panic as well. I don't think we need to sit here and, you know, all panic stations. Rob Dickey's left us. What are we going to do now? That's it. Relegation, mid-table at most. It's not going to be that at all. Rob Atkinson's come in. He was playing non-league football. Just, a, you know, this time last season, he was going to start. Well, I mean, because of the season delayed, he was starting pre-season. He was starting in the season for East Lee. You know, He's not a non-league defender. He's not a League Two defender. He's a League One defender, and probably he's got he's got the he's got the potential to be a Championship defender as well, from what I can see in pre-season. I don't want to get ahead of myself. It's only what three games I've seen him, and you know I'm pretty sure he did pretty well in the other three that weren't obviously available for us to watch. But you know, six games, six games of pre-season, and in those three that we've seen, I think Rob Atkinson looks very very good. I think he's come in and done a great job instead of Rob Dickey. I don't think we're going to miss Rob Dickey as much as I think people are going to think. We're going to miss Rob Dickey. I think QPR have got a fantastic player in him. He's strong. He's ball playing. He can he can run out of the defence. He can make things happen going forward as well. If he wants to do that, if he wants to pass out from the back, of course he can do that. But I think Rob Atkinson, with a bit of training, with a bit of you know, bit of bit of coaching that you're not going to get a non-league and you're now going to get as a, as a League One side as well. You know, Carl Robinson was a big reason why Rob Dickey has just gone to QPR and a big reason why he's going to step up at the level of QPR. So if Rob Atkinson can do the same, if we can go at Rob Atkinson as well, I think that's going to be fantastic. He generally looks very, very good. So I'm happy with it. I'm happy with the defenders. I'm happy with the midfield. Obviously, we're happy with Easton and Gart. And Jack Stevens had a really good pre-season as well, I thought. So, you know, and the attackers as well. We've got a really good bunch of attackers. Matty Taylor, Sykesy, Ford. Derek Oswe as well. Um, can I just say, Marcus McGuane, what a player that player is in, in, in pre-season, what he's shown us. You know, Barcelona, Arsenal, Nottingham Forest. I don't know how much Nottingham Forest paid for um, for this for this Marcus kid, but, you know, what a player. All the Marcuses that come to Oxford United are top, top players in recent years. So if this Marcus McGuane can be even better than our Marcus Brown we have for the last few seasons, that would be fantastic. But he generally does look very, very good. So... Really happy with the performance um, from us in pre-season. Really happy with generally the performance of the players. Happy with Sean Clare, um, the new right-back as well. Haven't seen much of Joel Cooper because of the injury again in uh, on in the QPR game. Um, but, I mean, other than that, I think generally we've we've had a really, really good pre-season. I think positive should be high in the fan base. I think everyone at Oxford United should be pretty happy with the performance of everyone um, in, with all the players as well. And I think we should uh, be excited for the season. It's not long now till the Wimbledon game. Just a few more days until we kickstart, I'd say, the season. I'd say it is a competitive game. It is, um, obviously, 
Um, a game that you know does mean more than a preseason friendly. It's a, it's a Carabao Cup game. We'll be doing a preview for it. We'll be doing a match reaction review as well. So, um, you know, we'll be doing all that good stuff as well. That's probably going to drop on Friday. Um, Friday night, the preview. Um, the reaction could, should be probably either Saturday or Sunday. So, you know, exciting times at Oxford United. Exciting times here on the podcast. And it's a very, very, um, very, very positive end to pre-season with a 2-2 draw against Brentford. It sounds weird I'm saying a positive draw, but it is a positive draw. We were 2-0 down against the top-end championship side, and we've drawn it back to 2-2. So, happy with it. And if you're happy with it as well, make sure you leave a like on this episode of the podcast. Um, so, you know, leave a comment down below. How do you feel about this this pre-season? How do you feel about how it's gone? And where do you think Oxford United are going to finish this season? Of course, I've just done my predictions episode. I put you third. Again, I've already thanked you for the support on that, but I thank you again. It has been fantastic. If you could do the same on this episode of the podcast, subscribe, leave a like. Oh, that would be fantastic. Um, you know, I think we're really, really in a really, really good place. Um, so, you know, positive, positive, um, positive things at Oxford at the moment. Really positive. We've just lost Rod Dickey, but, you know, we've got a really good, really good backup in, in Rob Atkinson. I don't think he's any backup anymore. I think he's going to be a, a solid first teamer as well. But thank you very much for listening to this episode of the podcast. It's not as long as the last one, but it's still 25 minutes long or so, 26 minutes. Um, so hopefully you enjoy this episode of the podcast. Um, you know, have a good rest of your day. I was going to say have a good rest of your week, but I say that every time now. And There's an episode in the middle of the week. Have a good rest of the week. I should see you on Friday. Um, um, I should also see you at the weekend as well for the um, sort of review of the Wimbledon game as well. But thank you very much for listening to this episode of the podcast, and I will see you later.